What's up everyone? Thanks for tuning back in. Uh, I'm here today because just a couple days ago I posted a short video on what the accommodation was like in the mines, at least when I was doing it. And I actually had someone reach out to me asking how I got that position and what it was like and if I had any tips for them. So I thought I'd make this video. Working in the mines is such a desired position for so many Australians and also a lot of backpackers and that's for basically one reason, money. It can be a great source of a pretty large amount of money relatively quick and it can also lead to an excellent career and high paying job and a quite secure field as well if you're an Australian citizen or someone that's looking at staying in Australia. So today I'm going to run through all the things that I did to get a job and as well as the things I know other people did to maximize your chances of getting a job in the mines whether you're planning to just do it for a couple months or you want to start a career i'm hoping these things that i've done and i know my friends have done will be able to help you and streamline your process and give you the best chance possible of landing a comfortable secured high paying job in the australian mines all right let's go for it Okay, so the first tip and the one that might lead to the most possibilities for you is I would recommend you move to WA. Almost all mines in Australia are in WA and if you are there, companies are much more likely to fly you from an area such as Perth or Broome to a mine in WA than they are to fly you from Sydney or Cairns or Brisbane or anything like that. So if you're in WA, not only will you have a more likely chance of finding FIFO kind of work, but you'll also have a better opportunity to contact companies, you'll be quicker to reach, you'll have easier time getting your applications in, you'll have more time on your off weeks, it'd be much better. On top of that, I would recommend moving directly to Perth, as most companies fly in and out from there, and they have their head offices in Perth most of the time. Now, if you really aren't into living in Perth or the surrounding suburbs, such as Fremantle, which is awesome by the way, really recommend living there, you can live in one of the mining camps. Now, this is great because you might not have to fly out and you'll have be able to sleep at home, maybe have an apartment or something like that. Chances are, if you live in one of the mining camps, they won't be having you stay in the camp, right? So you'll have to pay for your own accommodation there. And the offside of this is that on your week off or two weeks off, whatever you have, you're also gonna be in the mining camp as well, which generally aren't that fun, but maybe it'll work for you. Number two is the more qualifications, the better. The more qualifications and certificates and licenses you can have before you apply to the mines, the absolute better. Because if you can say that you have your first aid, heavy truck, your C-class driver's license, your full driver's license, you have driver's abstract already, all that kind of stuff, and you can send that with your application, your resume, companies will love that because that means they can get you ready and get you up there a lot faster than someone who has to have the qualifications beforehand. Like I just said, some of the main ones are the off-road trucks, the heavy driver, working confined space, first aid, full driver's license, pretty much anything. Actually, I can almost guarantee you that any mine will need a police check. So if you're applying and you can have a relevant police check and notify them or send that with your application, that'll help out a lot too. Also, be sure to tell them if you've been working in the trades or if you've had any other experience such as uh, construction, if you worked underground, if you're used to working in remote areas, if you've done FIFO work before, definitely include that. I think that probably helped with me because I'd done remote work in Canada before and I think that stood out on my application because I was asked about it in my interview. Okay, number three is use sites like Indeed or Seek and apply to a boatload of places. If you look on Seek and Indeed and type in just entry-level mining jobs or no experience required, you'll find dozens and dozens if not hundreds of job opportunities out there from a lot of recruitment agencies or training centers or actually mine companies themselves. So go through all of these and apply for as many as you can. This is what got me my job. I actually applied when COVID happened. I came back to Perth due to things that were up north and we were scared, everything got shut down. I was actually out of work and I went on there and applied for must have been 50 jobs, right? And ended up about a month later or a month and a half later, someone got back to me and asked if I was open, still looking for an opportunity and if I was open to an interview. That's another thing to keep in mind. Chances are, if you apply, you won't hear back in a week. I never heard back from any of those other places. I actually heard back from two places in total out of the 50 or 60 I applied to. And one was just kind of a feeler and asked if I had a specific qualification, which I did not. And the other one was an entry level position, which I ended up getting. So 
make sure that you apply for a lot of places. Don't be stingy with it. Apply everywhere. Don't be lazy. Make sure you sit down for a whole day and just send out as many applications as you can because in reality, it is a numbers game. Okay, number four, on top of using Seek and Indeed, make sure you contact a bunch of recruiting companies. One of the biggest ones is Hayes Recruiting and they are really helpful because they are in direct line and most of the time the mines don't actually do their own recruiting and don't hire themselves. They use an agency. These agencies are really helpful because they can set you on a direct path to a company and not only that, if something doesn't work out, they can actually find you multiple routes, multiple different companies and they can shuffle you around and move you if possibly necessary. And for the future reference, if you ever want to switch, they can have your record, know you're a good worker and they've already worked with you before. So it'll be much easier to find a position again afterwards or if you're wanting to move up it'll be a lot easier with a recruitment agency to find another job afterwards number five is network like crazy as most of you may know the mining jobs are so desired almost everyone wants to get a job in the mines at some point because it is such a high paying job and it doesn't require specific education to start out that being said, it is a close-knit community. Most people that get jobs in the mines know somebody or had a dad or a cousin or something like that that worked in it or made a really good impression when they luckily met somebody. So make sure you network like crazy. The Seek and Indeed will work, but it is a lot easier if you had a friend that can vouch for you and just talk to the company. That is extremely beneficial. That's how I got a job in Canada, and without that, I wouldn't have known possibly how to do it. I don't even think I would have probably got one. So make sure you network, contact people, contact any friends you've had, see if they have any cousins or brothers or anyone that's worked in the mines before. At the very least, you can pick their brain and find out how they did it or how, what they recommend. So network like crazy. This job specifically is a close-knit community and the people you know will set you a lot farther forward than just randomly applying for jobs. Okay, the final one, number six, is don't be afraid of entry-level positions. Don't be afraid of taking a camp job or something like that to start off. My job, actually all I was was a camp worker. I worked for a company called ESS and I did a variety of things from working in the kitchen, which sucked, but primarily I worked in the bar and helped out with maintenance and stuff, which was pretty cool. It was actually not so bad at all and it made the day not as bad as when you have to spend in the kitchen or anything like that. Now these jobs might not be desirable to a lot of people and they don't pay nearly as much as the actual in mine underground jobs, but when I was in this position, I got offered so many times for other jobs. I got offered at least five or six times in three months to get jobs in the mines or with a trucking company or something like that as an offsider. So don't be afraid to take these jobs because again, that's just an outlet for you to network. It is much easier to get a job working deeper in the mines or a further position when you're actually on location working and they see that you're working than it is to get a job when you're sitting at home just applying online. Chances are you won't be getting a job in the deep mines right off the bat. If you take one of these utility kind of roles or offsider roles first, it's a very quick and a much straighter road to get to the point where you want to be in the ground, where if you either want to be a machine operator or a truck driver, it's much easier because you can make friends up there, get to know people, and you get to know way more people in the industry if you're actually working at camp than if you're not there. All right, that's it, guys. I recommend it, trying to find a job in the mines. It was cool for me, and it was a great way to earn some money. You can easily make a load of money really quick and travel for eight months after that without having to work, or if you're planning to stay, it's a great way to start a career. On top of that, if you have any questions at all, please feel free to reach out to me. I had a pretty good experience, and I have actually a lot of friends who have worked in the mines and have a lot of experience with that, specifically from the backpacker standpoint, as well as I know Australian friends. So if you need any contacts or resources, feel free to reach out to me. I'd be happy to help you and hope everything works out. All right, check it there, guys. Peace.